All right, man, Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. As you can see, Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Now y'all see why I was on the run. <laughs> ah, nigga rolled up on me, man. Took me right out. I had to get out of there. Anyway, so I'll be back soon. I'll be back in the studio soon. Uh, yeah, but he took over the show. And uh, it is what it is. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, somebody saying that Kendrick Lamar um, is going to rule 2025. And uh, if he does not like us at the Super Bowl, then Drake it's going to be a long year for him in 2025. So look. Before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work on your subscriptions today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen. Cash app, PayPal's in the description. They called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000. Let me know where you're from. I really appreciate it. You know what I mean? So let's get to the content, man. All right, man. So let's get it. Let's go. Come on, man. This thing is stupid. Welcome yeah. back to Marcus at Work Media. So I found another interesting clip this time with Jody Breeze. You remember him from that Boys in the Hood group with Young Jeezy and Gorilla Zo. So my guy Jody Breeze has some interesting perspectives dealing with the Kendrick Lamar and Drake battle. People feel like uh, if Kendrick performs not like us at the Super Bowl, that will be the final nail in Drake's coffin. A whole nother year on Drake's ass. <laughs> hey. It's going to be a whole nother year on his Go ass. He okay, so I think that uh, it's so crazy that this battle is still going on. And it's because I believe that it's, it's because Kendrick Lamar left a lasting impression on everybody he left a really last he left a lasting impression on people and i think that uh him uh basically doing not like us at the super bowl i wouldn't say it's the final nail in the coffin because i think that uh i think that drake's already out of here i think he's already out of here i think he could still do music but i don't think he's gonna be what he used to be i just don't think that if he comes back, I could say, okay, he come, he came back, and that was a great comeback, but I just don't see it happening. From all the years I've been seeing music, I've never seen somebody come back after this. So uh, we're going to see what 2025 plays out, but let's keep it going. If he do that song, which I think he is, my God, they're going to be on Drake ass for, for the rest of 2025, too. If he played Not Like Us at the Super Bowl, which I'm pretty sure he is, even if he just do a chorus and a verse or a verse and a chorus, whatever it go, if he play it at all, it's going to be on Drake's head another full year. Let and, I, and I totally agree with that. I think that Not Like Us is a timeless song. And even when people saying it, that, that it's been overplayed. The thing about not like us is people say it's being overplayed and then people on people really say that about rap music for the most part. But there's other songs that people would say that's overplayed, it just played out, but if the song goes, it goes. But I think that not like us, if it's being played, it's gonna become don't let it be because I think not like us is gonna become a yearly thing with the HBCUs and the and those uh I think that's when Not Like Us is going to become. Because once you start getting it to a thing, like kind of like Blinding Lights, every year, Blinding Lights is kind of like the new uh, 1999, uh, the uh, Party Like It's 1999. And I think that that's where uh, Not Like Us is headed. A yearly song that's going to be played every year for a certain amount of time. But let's keep it going. Listen. The dialogue and debate around the beef 
is still very, very active in the forums, with the YouTube posts, with the TikToks, with the breakdowns, with every spin of this battle is still very active with millions of people. So if he play that song, it's over for Drake a whole nother year. <laughs> like it's a lot of them Jay-Z nuts, all that shit was cool, you know what I mean? Pop, Biggie, everybody, you know what I mean? Or uh, Ice Cube, them back. But listen, man, what this little boy came out of nowhere and did? You feel him? Just like, you know, I can see if he had songs out and he was doing shit. LaHone was just chilling. Yeah. Y'all went over there barking up that tree. And that little boy came out and gave that ass D Benny. I, I got a different kind of respect for him because I know he a Gemini too. I f with, I f with, bro, like, just yeah. on some Gemini shit. But you can't f with niggas that don't f with people, bro. You know what I mean? Like, when niggas don't, he not one of them type of people anyway to even just be doing it. Yeah. But if you... Push him. Yeah, they, man, he, when I say he went ape sh Man, listen, man. <laughs> now, I'm a little thrown off because he keeps... <laughs> he absolutely right about that. He's saying, like, listen, bro. You can't go over there and mess with that dude. That dude don't bother nobody, bro. Kendrick is like... He's like the Shaolin monk. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the dude was it Gordon Liu. He's like Gordon Liu. He's like in his monk stance and with the six dots on his head. Like, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go mess with that dude because he's too much. Kendrick is too much for you niggas. Too, he's too much for you niggas. Let's, let's just be clear here. Let's keep it going. Calling Kendrick a little boy, which, <laughs> yeah, that, that just that just sounds weird, bro. Kendrick was minding his own business, doing his thing. He put out songs whenever he wanted to put out songs, minding his own business, and he was pulled out of his shell, of his cave, by Drake, and, yeah, we see how that went. <laughs> Listen, you can't f with people that don't f with nobody. <laughs> hey, I agree with that, bro. <laughs> and that's real though. That's real though. People that mind their own business, you know, the dude sitting in the corner minding his own business, and he don't talk to nobody, and the dude over there bullying him. Yeah, just leave that dude alone, Kendrick. And it, I know, I know, a lot of y'all grew up in school, right? <laughs> grew up in school. A lot of y'all was in school, and y'all always seen that one kid that you just don't want to mess with, and he always lean seem a little weird or whatever, and. You go over there and mess with that kid. And that, and that kid, that kid, you go over there. I don't know why I'm trying to stop my stuff from yarning, man. I've been up been up all day. If I want to yarn, I'm going to fucking yarn, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to stop trying to yarn. I know y'all be seeing that. I be like, trying to stop myself from yarning or I move out the camera. <laughs> like that. I ain't doing that no more, man. If I got to yarn, I'm just going to yarn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, man, listen, this, this is torture talk. I'm just going to go with it. Anyway. Um, I think that, uh, you see that kid over there in school and you know, not to mess with that kid or, you know, or you think that you can mess with him and bully him and he just scoop slam you in your neck, and break your hand and your neck at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So I think Kendrick is that guy. He's that guy sitting in the corner. He always don't bother. Nobody he keeps his mouth shut. And, and Drake is the guy. He's like, he's like the jock from the, the, the star quarterback that was always talking shit. And then he gets scoop slammed and on the back of his head. Now he can't play football. Broke his, his, his throwing hand. You know what I'm saying? Is that guy, man. He, just, he mind his own business. Leave him alone. It, 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 but when you call him out and you put him in a corner, it, it, yeah, it's a prop. It, it, it's a prop. And we know those type of people. And K-Dot was clearly one of those type of people. I don't see nothing wrong if it would have went this way i'm just gonna be all the way open mind kendrick bringing wayne out yeah and wayne bringing drake out and that shit just squashing all around the table you feel me but like i say that's just me dog mm -hmm. i be pushing for peace even with this hot boy i'm always pushing for peace but it seemed like mother the powers that be they don't want that dog i don't know if it's the powers that be i think it's more I think it's more that it went past peace. Now, again, I'm with him, too. I'm always for peace, too. And it's, it, the ironic thing is Kendrick Kendrick said in, in, in um, Meet the Grams that. Excuse me. He said in Meet the Grams that he was the only guy that could help Drake. That's what he said. If he was to bring Drake out. That would be such another move. 
right there. Because he will, it would seem like he's the only guy that can put Drake Black back where he's at. You know what I'm saying? And who knows? Kendrick and Drake probably had a conversation already. Who knows? They probably is going to squash the beef at the Super Bowl. I know a lot of people would be mad, but then a lot of people would probably be okay with it. Because, to be honest, I think Kendrick... I ain't gonna say bringing Drake out, but I think him and Drake getting past it is actually better for hip hop in the, in the long run. But then again, I just don't think and maybe Kendrick will do it, but I don't think Drake. Do. I think Drake has too much pride for that. I really do. I think Drake. That's that's just automatically admitting that you took a super L. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Drake is capable of uh, doing that. Cause peace don't, don't pay no. That. The peace don't pay. In, that's an interesting perspective right there. He said he feel like in a perfect world, it would be Kendrick doing the Super Bowl, bringing out Wayne, Wayne bringing out Drake, and then this whole thing turns into a happily ever after. Um, That sounds great. I don't think that's going to happen at all. I don't think Kendrick's going to bring out Wayne, and I don't think Wayne, damn show, ain't going to bring out Drake while Kendrick is on the stage. I don't think this is going to happen. Although, I agree with the pusher for peace. That's been J. Cole's biggest thing. He didn't want to get into the... J. Cole's, J. Cole's a hypocrite, though. He's the he's the worst out of both of them, if you ask me, for a sneak disser. The more I listen to J. Cole, and more I start to see that he's been a, he's been a sneak disser for a long time. He's been a hypocrite for a long time. And that song really put really made me feel some type of way about him. I still respect his lyrics, but I'm not really on him like I was before because I see right through his bullshit now. I really do. I see right through Drake Cole's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He ain't slick. Now, do I think that Kendrick is going to bring out uh, um, Wayne? It's going to sound crazy, but I think he is going to bring out Wayne. I think Kendrick is going to bring out Wayne. I don't think Wayne is gonna bring out. Uh, I don't think Wayne is gonna bring out uh, uh, Drake, but I definitely think Kendrick is gonna bring out Wayne. And they got a song together. Now I don't know if they're gonna do that song, but maybe Wayne will come out and do two song, two of his songs. But I kind of think that that's what's gonna happen. Maybe Wayne is gonna come out and do something, and then kind of, kind of like an intro. I'm predicting that. I'm predicting Wayne comes out and he does an intro and then then Kendrick comes out or I'm thinking I mean it could either be one or the other I don't know why I'm saying it like that but Kendrick could actually come out and then bring um, Wayne out so let's see what else he didn't want to get into all that he seen where everything was going and he didn't want no part of the quote-unquote blood in the streets that's what the powers that be quote-unquote wanted is the drama, the beef, the negativity, and he wasn't with it. Okay, yeah, he came back with the Port Antonio, blah, 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 blah. We, we get that, and we had our commentary on that. Jody Breeze jumped in again. The powers that be set it up that peace don't sell. That's a strong statement, which history has taught us anything, especially dealing with hip-hop, what is the narratives that win in popular hip-hop? A lot of times it is over sexualizing women, the ratchet thought type music dealing with the women. It's the male rappers talking about drugs and street culture and gangs and self destructive behavior and patterns in the culture is typically what's highlighted. A lot of times the positive type music does not hit the mainstream and does not hit the mainstream in a very popular way okay so i can explain why that is the and it's a simple reason why the reason why is because most artists don't talk about that see if if most of the hip-hop artists talked about uh if most hip-hop if, if most hip-hop artists talked about um trying to be successful uh cryptocurrency uh, selling real estate, making money, um, traveling. If most hip hop artists rapped about that, if if I say let's say ninety percent of them rapped about that, they will make money. 
because that's the music that people would have to listen to. But if you have most of your music, it's about street life and about negativity and about guns, violence and about over sexualizing. Yeah, obviously you might not make as much money, but if rap, if rap was to had was an educational thing, because look, look at country music, right? Country music don't talk about killing. They don't talk about none of that. They talk about real life stuff, but it ain't, t- ain't about killing. And what happens? It still sells. So the same thing could apply with hip hop, but I think hip hop is more of an aggressive thing because we created it, it that way, battling and, and turn to and every every aspect of hip hop is battling in some type of form or way, whether it's clothes, break dancing, uh, uh, stretching music down to rap words. I, I'm better than you. It's always been a competition. So it's always going to, it would always had spilled over into the streets and now the streets come in like, well, my block better than yours. Or then it comes to that, well, I could shoot you and kill you. And it, it came down to that. So if hip hop was to parry away from that and actually go into being successful and how to be successful, because the record labels is going to push whatever they, whatever is making money. So if it's making money that you are rapping about something that's positive, they're going to push that. There's a lot of songs that's positive in that, that's, that soul that's been pushed. So it, it does happen. I just think that uh, most hip hop artists don't go down that route. And that's the reason why like the negative stuff that's just fact now we have your outliners you got the artists that have a positive message that get in the foreground in a positive light but they are the exception that is not the majority well the majority the majority is is because that's what the majority does but if the majority was to go that route where the positive because there are some rappers who are who for the most part their music is negative they do do positive things once in a while do positive songs it blows up so i understand what you're saying but that's something that you can change it's not like the majority of uh, let's say you was born a certain color and you are part of a majority or a minority that's different because you can't change that but with hip-hop people could literally change what they're rapping about that can be changed you know what i'm saying that could be changed the powers that be, the gatekeepers, always push these negative messages, especially in hip hop, because. Th- Again, I have a I have a huge problem with people saying that. Everybody's always saying the powers that be, the powers that be. Who's writing these music? Who's writing the songs? They don't make them rap like that. These rappers are rapping that way. You can't say it's the powers that be that does this. Yeah, they promoting whatever you put out. Whatever you, whatever they think they can make money off of, they're going to make money off of it. That's what any business, though. I don't blame the record, and I don't blame the music industry for what rappers do. I don't. Music industry is the music industry. That's what they're going to do. Whatever you put out is what they're going to promote. If you decide that you're going to put out something that is uh, uh, of uh, of uh, violence and, and, and death and destruction, and they can make money off of it, that's what they're going to do. That's exactly what they're going to do. But if you decide that you're not going to do that, and you say, you know what? I'm not going to put out something that's death and destruction and violence. I'm actually going to put out something that um, is actually good for people. And you do it in a way where, like Nipsey Hussle, he was, he was good for people. He said some things, but for the most part, his music was more about uplifting people out of poverty. And he sold records. He did it. So I understand the whole concept of the outlier thing, but... It's not because the, the record labels are doing this. These rappers, they they rapping about the stuff. The record labels don't rap like that. They don't, they don't, t- they could they could say, look, we want you to, we you need to rap like this. That's because they're seeing the money being made over there. That's just that. I don't blame the record labels for anything when it comes to rappers uh, putting out music or putting music, negative music out. It's not the record label's fault. They're trying to make money. If you're putting out negative music, then you can't blame them. But let's keep it going. That's what's proven that it's sell. That is a whole nother conversation debating why that is. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with Jody Bree's perspective on Kendrick about he was minding his own business, Drake called him out, he got what he asked for, and if he plays not like us at the Super Bowl, it's going to be a whole nother year on Drake's head. Yeah, man. I get what he's saying, but like I said, and this has nothing to do with the music industry. That, I know that was a little tangent that I went off. But anyway, 
I like to just talk freely sometimes and whatever I disagree with what some people say. It doesn't matter if it's the topic or not. So I know people say, well, uh, I like that you just you jump from topic to topic sometimes. That's what I like. I like to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it's good to do that. It's good to speak on different things on one topic sometimes. But anyway, do I believe that this is going to uh, continue on? I definitely do believe this is going to continue on. Not like us isn't going anywhere. Um, and Drake's name isn't going anywhere. So as long as Not Like Us is being played and Drake's name is still relevant or around, that song is going to always stay attached to him. And I said that before. That song is going to stay attached to Drake for the rest of his life, for the rest of his career. It's, 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 he, might as well just, he might as well just ask Kendrick to be on a remix and defend himself on a remix. Just let's do a remix and defend myself on a remix. Th- that's it. Because outside of that, yeah, I just don't, I just don't see it. I just don't see it happening. But either way, man, happy Halloween to y'all. You have yourself a good, a good, uh, good day, man. All right, man. See y'all. Peace. Bye-bye.